a blessed morning to you out there. Welcome to the Porter's Gate online broadcast. This is Zadok uh, Kingdom Academy. Well, this morning, once again, by God's grace, we are going to continue to look into the Word of God, the mind of God. We're continuing this morning on our lecture. I felt, you know, for us to be able to do some catch up uh, uh, in terms of the things that we are talking about, that it's important that we also, you know, maybe add Sunday morning to it because indeed these are all part of, you know, building and transforming and equipping and preparing us for what the Lord has in stock for us. So if you're joining us this morning, I want to welcome you or wherever you're going to be joining from I believe God this morning to impact your life to resource you to uh, 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 if you will build new spiritual uh, capacity into your spirit man such that you'll be able to amen, carry out the intentions and the purposes of God for your life this morning we are going to continue to look at some powerful uh, things that the Spirit of the Lord began to open our eyes to. I believe so far we've been able to share some important uh, uh, values, principles, standards, and doctrinal uh, 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 you know, realities in, 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 in line with what it is and what it means to function in the prophetic. Amen. And so I believe once again that as we continue to understand the mind of God, the heart of God this morning, that our life will be greatly enhanced. We will move further. Amen. Into the arena of God's divine intentions and purposes. Uh, some very important things that we're going to be looking at this morning. And uh, these are also kind of, if you will, a f spiritual framework that will enhance our understanding, amen, about the prophetic. It's important that we see that what God is doing in our day, amen, is that he is resourcing our spirit, amen. He's equipping us in, in the knowledge of, you know, spiritual things, particularly spiritual things as it relates to his, his own nature and, of course, the advancement of his kingdom. We are in a day of great contradiction. We are in a time, we're in a season where the things that we're seeing happening around us, <clears throat> excuse me, can be very, you know, daunting if we don't have a broad, you know, a, an, and a wide spiritual understanding. We can look at things in the natural realm, amen, and conclude. And the battle has always been between what we see in the natural realm, amen, and what has been designed, amen, or ordained, amen, in the spirit realm. So there is that challenge, there is that battle between, amen, what we see in the natural realm and what we ought to be seeing in the spiritual realm. So I pray that once again, that as we continue to open our hearts and open our understanding, amen, allow God to touch our understanding, amen, and, and, and realign, amen, and reordain, if you will, you know, uh, uh, redesign our spiritual insight and, uh, you know, will that we will be able to embrace all of the things that the Spirit of God is doing because we like it or not, there is a walking Amen. Within the heart of the people of God, there is a walking within the church in this season in time. And many of the things that we are faced with, we have seen and how, amen, we have come to judge things, uh, you know, can can be adjusted. We can we can really adjust. We can look at things again. You will notice that one of the first thing that, amen, is brought before the prophet, particularly when, uh, you know, such a person is ready to, you know, go and represent God. It's the testing of their eyes. Jeremiah, you know, explained that God said to Jeremiah, son of man, what do you see? What do you see? It's not enough, amen, to blepo. It's not enough to watch things. It's not enough to have, you know, uh, 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 um, you know an understanding of, you know, realities. You, you get what I mean? You can, you can stand before a house and say, that's a house. You're right. You can stand before, you know, a car. All right. And somebody ask you, what's that? You say, it's a car. What kind of a car? Well, it's a Ford. Uh, 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 what make? Well, you can tell them because you can see, amen, signs and symbols, amen. But if they begin to ask you, amen, certain things about, you know, that car that you don't have, you know, a prior understanding regarding, you know, uh, how the manufacturer designed them, then you, you don't know. You understand? So what we are dealing with are not the obvious, if you will are not the obvious. What we are dealing with are the dimensions of a life, amen, that help us to understand how things are panning out. 
in the natural human realm. Amen. And so I pray that once again, that as we begin to press further, as we begin to develop the yearning, the desire, amen, the quest to want to know what is behind the curtain, to want to know what the Lord, amen, has made available, amen. The Bible says, amen, it's, it's, uh, it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It's been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It said, but to others, to others is in parable. So when they look at things, amen, they can't decode. They can't, they can't make sense of things. They can't make sense of their life. They can't make sense of why things happen the way they happen. They can't make sense of, amen, what's going on in the world. Some people will conclude, well, I, 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 maybe the whole world should just end. Maybe we should just end it and, and go and, you know, and go to heaven. You understand? As if going to heaven, amen, is the is the final solution. There's a reason why we're placed on earth. There's a reason why, amen, the Lord Himself prayed in John 17, Father, I pray that you do not take them out of the world. Hey, you know that the world is going to be chaotic. The world is going to be full of, you know, ups and downs, you know, all kinds of challenges, you know, evil. Yet it says, Don't take them out of the world. All right, he's coming for a glorious church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. So we read scripture and then we we just conclude based on what we have read, but not allowing, amen, the, the, the word of God to help us to interpret what the spirit of God is saying such that we are postured in a way that we are able to precisely and accurately relate and relay, amen, yes, what the Lord is doing within our space or beyond even our space. So these are not days, amen, to be ignorant. My people will always perish for lack of knowledge all right we cannot talk about you know spiritual things if we're not searching if we're not seeking if we're not yearning for knowledge and not knowledge from anywhere not knowledge from you know from any human understanding or some religious a, a, a value system somebody may ask so what then it may gives us the the, the 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 confidence that what we are reading amen in the word of god amen is the basis for 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 truth is the basis for understanding and interpreting life well the the scripture amen made it clear and the things that God have prophesied, have spoken about, they have come to pass. Many are still coming to pass. There are events, there are, you know, you know, archaeological proofs, amen, that the word of God is real. Even if you don't believe, because indeed our belief is not something that just happened. Sometimes we need to go through certain things. Sometimes, you know, we need evidence to believe. But the reality is, amen, you can count on the things that God has said in his word, amen. You can count on the Bible, you can count on the word of God, because those are the very foundational basis, amen, to, to, to embracing your journey. Because what's the use, amen, of wanting to know, you know, uh, 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 the prophetic or want to have a desire or go, you know, in the, in the directions of the prophetic, why you don't even have the basic foundation of your love, of your, you know, trust and faith in God and in the things of God. You, you get the point that I'm making. So these are very important principles, amen, that we are looking. Our faith must be established, amen, on, on truth. Our faith must be established, amen, on the, on the counsel of God, amen, on the testimony of God, on the testimony of his word, amen. We must be believers, what we believe is important, amen. It's not enough to just say, I believe. Our, our belief is not blind. Our belief, amen, is connected to sound understanding. Yes, and that's why we're praying, amen, that the spirit of understanding be given to us because we can know things. We have the ability to know things spiritually because we're created that way. We have the amen. We have the ability to know things spiritually. You know, people when before they give their life to Jesus, you will hear them say, "Well, I sense something. I, 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 something said to me. I feel something." You understand? Uh, uh, that, that's part of you know their their you know their, their their spirit man. Amen. Trying to communicate to them, even though amen, that spirit man has not been awakened to know to understand how to relate and how to communicate. And some will run to all kinds of places. They will run to you know people with familiar spirit. They will run to you know soothsayer and all of that. But you see, God has established within man all that man needs. Amen. To become and to fulfill, to understand, to interact, to relate late with him amen and to of course his environment the things that god created amen are designed to be both spiritual amen and natural in interaction <clears throat> Excuse me. They are designed to be both spiritual and natural. Now you'll understand that in the fall, man lost, amen, that sense of spirituality. We lost it. 
we lost it but when christ came amen he redeemed us back now we have the sense now we have amen uh, uh, the, the the if you will the desire and the passion and you know the ability amen to not only to return back to god but to begin to understand amen his ways and to understand who we are amen and of course to understand life it is it's amazing that you know you, we will take for granted that we need to know who we are Many a times, what we claim we know about ourselves is far fetched, far fetched from who we are. Amen. Because the enemy has done all kinds of things, has done all kinds of things to give us wrong view, wrong identity, you know, wrong sense of you know a belief system, wrong philosophy, and so our conclusion is always wrong, even about our own self. <clears throat> Excuse me, even about our own self. It's going to take you to, to begin to know the Lord, to begin to trust God, to begin to understand God's intention, God's plan. Amen. Then that begins by reading the word of God. Amen. Reading the word of God does something to your spirit. It awakens the spirit man. Amen. Reading the word of God. Amen. Shut down. Amen. The voice of the enemy that has been ruling you. You shut down so many things in your life. Amen. It gives you access to begin to rediscover who you are. And it's from that point. Amen that you can begin to make informed decision how many people in the in the in the sense of well i'm highly educated how many people have gone to school have all the degrees yet their life is still upside down it's up, still upside down still dysfunctional because intellectual knowledge does not really amen point who you are to you and that's why you find highly you know educated people amen going to all kinds of places all right searching for so-called light searching for truth searching for a way out because they know that amen they, <laughs> to, to excel in life to succeed in life goes beyond just intellectual knowledge you have to have amen some form of knowledge that speak into a dimension that you cannot relate to but it's calling you and this is where the concept of you know you coming to the lord giving your life to jesus is not a one-way ticket just to go to heaven it's about you first of all rediscovering who you are in god hallelujah I'm saying this, this, this may sound elementary, but they are the foundation, they are the basis, they are the framework, amen, that defines how we grow. You know, you can be in church, you can be in church and, and be doing all the church thing for, for years and never really discover, amen, who you are, the basics of, the basis of your, your purpose in life, the call of God upon your life, the intentions of God, amen, what to do. How many times have we made decision, amen, from our intellectual, you know, uh, uh, you know, position only to discover that we're wrong. And I'm not saying that, amen, we should not have intellectual knowledge. In fact, we should increase in that because that works amen with amen the knowledge of god that has been awakened in our in our spirit that works with amen our 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 spiritual uh, you know uh, if you will in uh, uh, awareness amen they work together what we are looking for is is is, is unity is unism hallelujah is is coming together amen is every aspect of our life amen spirit soul and body mentally emotionally amen yes coming together and functioning in harmony to bring glory to god that's what we're looking for not you know having sight in one area and then in other areas of our life we're so blind that's that's not what we're looking for we want to understand all of the counsels and the will of god for our life we want to understand amen all of the purposes of god for our life and this requires that we develop amen you know what we define as a prophetic spirit a prophetic spirit before we begin to go and mature and develop into a man maybe being called into an, a prophetic office amen before we develop a man into you know even functioning in a prophetic giftings first of all we need to develop a prophetic spirit and that is very powerful because when you do that then there are certain things that you're gonna avoid amen it, it will help you, amen, from being deceived, amen, by charlatans, amen. It will help you from being, you know, being, being, being spiritually abused, all right. One of the reasons why many, you know, 80% of the members of the body of Christ are spiritually uh, are abused, amen, by so-called leaders, amen, is because those people really do not know, amen, anything about their, their spirituality. They don't know. They want to know, but they're running to the wrong place. That's very true, all right? The reason why people are confused, the reason why people are depending on, you know, on dreams, the reason why people, I mean, how many people b believe that a, a dream will solve all their problem? That, a, you know, a vision will solve all their problem? 
But these are these are very minute in the rankings, in the in the in the direction, in the structure, amen, of spirituality. When you give your life to Jesus, when Christ is in you, when Christ lives in you and Christ functions, amen, you allow Christ to function the way he ought to function because he gave you a will. You can choose, amen, to, to allow him, amen, to have all of you, or you can choose to give him some part. And that's what you're gonna get. So when we give our life and we say we've given our life, amen, we have, we have been converted. It means that we are no longer living via, amen, the systems of this world. We're no longer operating. We're no longer thinking, amen, the way the world wants us to think. Because there's a narrative, there is a pattern of, of, of how the world system, amen, wants us to think. Romans chapter 12 tells us that, amen, be not conformed to this world, but be rather be transformed by the renewing, renewing. That's where the battle is. Many of us have given our life so-called given our life to jesus but our mindset amen our thinking our belief system is still amen influenced strongly influenced by amen the world standard all of the things that is going on around us right now are all being influenced amen by certain narrative either we like it or not and therefore we need to have insight we need to have understanding you know many of the challenges the battles going on between you know uh, 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 uh you know Ukraine and Russia and the rest of the world, guess what? Amen. All have, amen, a narrative, an agenda that certain, you know, uh, 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 quarters want to promote. And if we don't have sight, if we don't have understanding, if we don't have clarity regarding the heart of God, the mind of God, in how to interpret times and season, we may just be, amen, following the wrong thing or siding the wrong, you know, uh, uh, the wrong path or not even making, making a choice of who to side, but seeing things the way god will have us to see because uh, uh, both sides are wrong both sides of the divide are wrong and we need to be able to have that balanced understanding in terms of you know the acts of the spirit and how to interpret things that's why the sons of Issachar, amen yes shows us amen a, a, a standard a benchmark of interacting bible says amen they did not just know the times and season but they also know what israel ought to do and that is what we are looking for amen in this training in this teaching we want to be able to have a clarity of things so that our decision amen are not ill informed our decisions amen are precise and accurate the essence of the prophetic amen and the, the prophetic spirit is to be able to see things amen in, in their true color to be able to understand how things are amen how things you know are, 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 it relates amen not look at things on the face value and then conclude no if you're speaking to me i don't just listen to you i'm listening to the things that you're not saying i want to understand amen the motive the agenda every conversation amen has got an agenda every conversation has got a motive there's something you want to sell to me there's something you want me to buy you want me to understand that you are not saying all right that's what i'm trying to listen to so that when i'm replying you i'm not replying just to what you're telling me i'm repairing I'm, I'm i'm replying to amen the agenda behind what you're not saying hallelujah you see J jesus knew the heart of men they, they were saying something but they meant something else that's why amen we, we've got to understand this principle amen of the testimony of jesus the basis for defining the prophetic nature you see before we get to prophetic act a lot of people are moved by the prophetic act they move by an action they move by you know hey somebody walked past you know i was watching a, a, a man of god very popular here in in, uh, in southern africa he was walking past in the church. Of course, in, in, in the church, you know how they do it. It's, it's always an act. It, it, so, it, it was supposed to be in that prophetic mood. He was walking past. He said, I see this man. I, I, I hear you. You, I, I, Your name is... He said, those are acts. Those are acts. The whole, the, the, the whole atmosphere, you know, is an, enter, is an entertaining, you know, atmosphere. Now, that's not prophetic. That's not prophetic. Pro the, the prophetic is not is it, it, it's, it, it's not a performance. That's why you know I'm saying before we even go into the office of a prophet, 
before we begin to understand the protocols of the gifts amen of the of of of, of prophecy and and of of the prophet we need to understand what amen the prophetic spirit means we need to know we need to we need to have a clarity in terms of what is the prophetic spirit because once you know the heart the core amen of something then it's easy to understand how that thing works it's easy to see amen that ah this thing is not working the way it ought to work and that the word of god amen has explained to us so I, I, you, you can see the direction that that i am taking this this subject I don't just want you to be carried away by a gift. A gift will pass away. Even the office of a prophet, the scripture says, will pass away. But the prophetic spirit will never pass away because the prophetic spirit, amen, is the very manifestation of the Christ life in us. And that will never pass away. Prophecies will cease. Prophecies will cease, the Bible says. But the prophetic spirit will never cease. Even when Jesus come, amen, and he reigns on earth, we will still be operating in the prophetic spirit. That's why the Bible says, he who do not have the spirit of Christ is not of him. Having the spirit of Christ is totally different from, amen, having a gift. The gift and the calling. A gift is, it's, is an instrument given to you, amen, to function, to carry out something, amen. You can abuse that gift. You can misuse that gift. You can misinterpret that gift, amen. Yes, even, even the fivefold ministry is still a gift. The Bible says, when he ascended on high, he gave gift unto men. The prophetic office is a gift, amen. Just like the apostolic office is a gift. But the prophetic spirit is not a gift. It's the life. It's what we breathe in and we breathe out. It's how we walk. <laughs> it's how we see. It's how we move. It's how we respond to life. The prophetic spirit, amen, is the very heart of the very nature of God, which is love. We're going to talk about that. And love is not just about, you know, an action we carry out. It's first a condition of existence in the Lord. You know what I just said now? The love is not just about an act because we define people by an act. Before the act, we need to understand, amen, the fruit, the nature. See, nature never change. That's why the battle of man today is to have a nature change. We have imbibed the wrong nature because, amen, Adam and Eve had the wrong fruit. So we are still struggling with all kinds of values because amen, we are being driven by a wrong nature. The spirit of God is ought to be our default nature. The spirit of God, amen, should be where we live life. The prophetic spirit is all about, amen, how you live life. It's not about performance. The Lord says, by their fruit, you will know them. <laughs> How do you know a fruit if you are not informed of the originality, of the authenticity of the fruit? If I've never tasted a fruit from Asia before, I never tasted this fruit from Asia. And the Bible says, by their fruit, which you know them. And here, amen, somebody wants me to attest if this fruit, amen, tastes in a particular way. It's a fruit, but I've never tasted before. Thank you so very much, man of God. Really appreciate uh, your joining this morning. Amen. Thank you, uh, 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 Apostle Will. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate it. Bible said, by their fruit, you will know that. How do I know a fruit that I've not tasted before? You see, our dilemma in the church, we quote scripture, but we don't understand, amen, its interpretation. Bible says, by their fruit, you will know them. How do you know a fruit that you have not tasted, that you have not experienced? How then do you become, amen, a judge in that field? I've, I don't know it. I've not tasted. Yeah, I can see it. I can, I'm holding it. I know it's a fruit, but guess what? <laughs> I've not tasted this fruit. 
I don't have a man a prior experience. I don't know how the fruit tastes. I know um, how a mango tastes. I know how um you know a guava tastes. I know how you know I, I know the characteristics, amen, of you know of a peach. You understand? I know how a uh, 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 you know a grape taste but there are certain there are exotic fruits that i've i've seen them on tv but i don't know how they taste so how then do i know so if somebody gives me a fake of that fruit how do i testify that that one is not the fake or is the real one i don't know it you have to experience it and that's where we are we are amen that's what i'm talking about if you have not experienced the fruit of the spirit if we do not understand the fruit of the spirit anybody can come and show you an act and tell you and in fact convince you that it is the authentic and it's in this line the bible says if the days are not cut short <laughs> there are certain fruits that will be manifesting in this last day that we will presume in fact we will conclude that this has to be god this just must be God. This must be God. And in fact, it's not God. So, but then how do you know that if you have not tasted? The Bible says, taste and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So, you, you, you begin to see that spiritual things demands experience. demands experience they said the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy now when when we hear prophecy what comes to your mind the spirit of jesus that's revelation nineteen ten. the spirit of christ is that the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy what comes to your mind when you hear amen uh, 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 the spirit of prophecy I'm sure you will imagine because you see our imagination also needs to be reformed needs to be transformed because you know the enemy has as as short change certain concept certain idea certain expectation certain imagery when you hear a prophet what comes to your mind when somebody said that's a prophet what comes to your mind When you hear, oh, that person is operating in the prophetic, what comes to your mind? All of these are things that we're going to deal with in this study. Because I want to inform you, you know, my, my, my mandate is to build a church that is no longer deceived. My mandate is to see that we inform, amen, the next generation of prophetic, you know, leaders, amen, both men and women, who will not be moved by you know by performance who oh, but who will be looking for fruits in every act they are looking for the fruit behind it because when you are driven and carried away by by a performance and you miss the fruit you not only are you deceived but you may just expose the entire congregation the entire family amen to deception how many families have opened you know their homes to you know people who call themselves prophet but operating in a familiar spirit how many families are giving you know all kinds of um, money all right to you know all kinds of people in the name of you know they're coming to pray for us they're coming to protect us they're coming to do god knows what i mean i grew up in that kind of a family i, I i've explained this when i was you know uh, still a teenager every friday as this group of people that come you know, looking so haggard, looking so dirty, looking so unkept. In the name of the prophetic. In the name, these people are prophets. You see this guy, you know, he's got dreadlocks. He's got all kinds of, the beard is unkept. Is, I mean, or, or they, or, and they all wear, even the white garment they wear, all right, is dirty. But you must see how, you know, uh, my, my, my granny and the people, you must see how they respect them. When they come, yeah, everybody's like, you know, uh, because these are the people of God. Alas, it was a lie. Till today, there are people who are supposed to be in positions of leadership. Who, people who are, the, who are the aim of affairs, of our political destiny. People who are leading nations, governments. Who, amen, on 
Sunday morning or Friday night. God knows they run to certain places. In the name of protection. In the name of, you know, prophetic. In the name of, you know, uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. Particularly in Africa. No wonder we are still backwards. No longer we are no longer why we are not developing. Because our image, our understanding, our view about what is defined to be the prophetic, amen, is skewed, is inaccurate. Many of us, even when we give our life to Jesus, amen, we have not changed that imagery, that understanding of what we define to be the prophetic. And therefore, amen, we still, we, we have what is called a carryover, a carryover mentality, a carryover, you know, perspective of what we define to be the prophetic. So we don't even know, we can't define, amen, a true prophet from a fake one, from, you know, <laughs> a charlatan one. We don't know. We don't know the difference. You say, how do you know that? Look at the church. Look at the people that our, you know, our people are running after in the name of the prophetic. Look at their life. Compare their life, amen, <laughs> to what the word of God says. Compare, amen, what you see them do. Compare their lifestyle, amen. J just compare their lifestyle to what Jesus said in his word. That's all. You, do, you don't need some, you know, you know, deep revelation to know that, hey, hey, this one is not a true prophet. You just need to compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. Just look at the word of God and compare to what you're seeing. Tomorrow, if you see me do things contrary, amen, to what the word of God says, then stop listening to me that I'm not a true prophet. Because the Bible says, by their fruit, we shall know them. So we need to begin to zero in into what is the fruit. How do we experience the fruit? So that when, amen, the fake comes, we can use, amen, yes, the, 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 the test tube of, of, the, of the fruit of truth that we, we have received and, and compare. Sorry, no, 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 no. We bring what they say to the laboratory, amen, of truth. We test it there. Hallelujah. And then we conclude, oh, that's right. Oh, no, no, that's wrong. The Bible says, one should prophesy, two should judge. Who says you can't judge prophecy? You judge prophecy by judging, amen, the bearer. By first judging, amen, the container. Because the container will either enhance, if the container doesn't matter, then the Lord will not take years in training, in preparing. Excuse me, I said if the container, if the vessel does not matter to God, then God will not take, amen, yes, you know, donkeys of years in training and retraining before he sends his people out. Elisha will not be pouring water, amen, before Elijah, you know, for 22 years. Jesus will not call, amen, his disciples to, to live with him. If training does not matter. Paul will not take Timothy under his leadership, amen, and build him until he's released. If training doesn't matter. Oh yeah, there are exceptions in the word of God that you know, God uses certain people that are not trained. And God will always do that. But amen, if we want to be called and we want to live life the way Christ lived his life, ah, well, then we need to embrace the principle of God's word. God used the donkey. The donkey does not need to be trained. You see, we've got to understand the context of scripture. God will use, you know, an harlot. A harlot that's not even given her life, doesn't know. But God used her to carry, to carry out his purpose. There will be those exceptions. And we will have many of those exceptions in this last day. But we need to know how to divide the line between those exceptions and, amen, the, the core, the, 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 the values, the principles of the word of God. God can use your boss. God can use anybody. God will use. In fact, God is using the devil. But that, God, that doesn't mean that God will see evil and take evil and say, I want to use evil because I need to bring good out of it. So let me use evil. God hates evil. 
And that's, that's my stand regarding what is going on in Ukraine right now. Regardless of the prophetic interpretation we are having, regardless of who is right or from who is wrong, when you look at the things on the face value, there is evil being perpetuated. When you bomb a place, you bomb children's hospital, you bomb all kinds of you know places that are civilian. Amen. That's evil. That's pure evil. You've moved away amen, from uh, uh, the, 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 the rules of engagement in war. Let's declare, let's say there's a war, but you've, you've, you've shifted away from the rules of engagement in war. That's evil. That's pure evil. And we cannot put that aside and say, well, it, it really doesn't matter. No, it does matter. Because amen, when you, when you, I would say when you sow evil, you will reap evil. I, I, are you are you getting it? we've got to be broad we have to go beyond amen being myopic and being you know being, being being prejudicial in the things of god in the things of the spirit we have to understand amen uh, the, the the broad reality our spirit must be amen expanded that's the point that i'm making so the basis for defining the prophetic nature or the accuracy of prophetic function is to precisely authenticate the testimony of Christ through the mani manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. I hope this is clear, friends. Because it has to be. Now, that statement is not complete. This ability to attestate, to test... This ability to understand things via amen, the fruits of the spirit, which the Bible called the testimony of Jesus, is what is known or called the spirit of prophecy. So it's not just about what you say, it's about the spirit that defines and declares what you say. You see, I can say one thing in a, in a million ways. And one thing that you say can mean a, one a million things it depends on how you say it it depends on the context to which you say it, it depends on amen what you are trying to convey oh, it is you see words words is what god gave to us god gave us words the word is the world we live in today is created by the world by, by god's word he's upholding all things by the word of his power oh i pray that we'll understand how powerful our words so that when we use our words, we use them, amen, in accordance to the prophetic spirit. That prophetic spirit, amen, must be subject, amen, to the process, to the will of God, to the counsels of God. So that then when you have, when you have really, you have really submitted yourself, let me put it this way. You have really died and you have been awakened in the true nature of that prophetic spirit. Then God can use that prophetic spirit to express press his intention the way he wants to so you're not the one manipulating the spirit is the spirit manipulating you is the spirit in fact controlling you the bible says jesus was led driven amen and carried into the wilderness you know there are places you don't want to go to but if the spirit is leading you there are things you don't want to say but the spirit is leading you to say it there are things that will make you look okay that will make you you know sound okay and be unaccepted generally but the spirit says that's not what i want you I, I need you to say these things this way because it's the spirit of prophecy the bible says the spirit of the spirit of the prophet is subject amen to the prophet you know what that means the spirit that guides the prophet amen is subject by the authority amen that the that the prophet amen is guided by to as many that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. It's not the final manifestation of what you say that matters. Amen. It is the Spirit that propels you. It is the Spirit that drives you, that, that, that leads you, amen, in the direction, amen, of what to say and how to say it. Prophecy is not just giving words. It's also about the maturing, the development, amen, of, of the grace of God in your life. In saying it the way God will have you say it. 
This is what is known or called the spirit of prophecy. Established on the solid biblical doctrine. Can you see? You will never run away. You will never be able to run away. Amen. From the spirit. Excuse me. From the doctrines of the word of God. When it comes to the spirit of Christ. You will never be. You can't separate amen, doctrine from spiritual things. Because it's doctrine that guides us. Doctrine is like the GPS. That guides us, that leads us to the uh, to our destination, to the place that we want to go. If there are no doctrines, we will end up amen, uh, practicing spirituality as you know the Buddhists do it, as you know the Hare Krishnas do it, amen. In fact, as Muslims, you know, do it. That's why today people don't see the difference. Some people don't see the difference between you know uh, uh, Christianity and Islam. They will tell you, but we are serving one God. <laughs> They will tell you, but we, we, we're all serving the same God. What's your problem? Why are you making this a force? Can't we just unite and just get over things? Huh? There are so many com, you know, com, you know, uh, 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 similarities amen, in other religions amen, to Christianity. In fact, there's a lot of similarity between amen, uh, 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 um, Judaism amen, and Christianity. But there's a sharp difference there's a big difference between judaism and christianity you see i, I, I study religion i study religion so i know i've seen this day and and you know you, you will see that many of our pastors because they lack doctrine because they have not studied amen they don't have theological knowledge they don't have doctrinal knowledge because doctrine means that you will sit down this is now where the spirit is moving me now no you have to sit down you have to be taught you have to learn you have to read books you have to make reference amen you have to make research yes you have to read history. You have to go into archives. You understand? You have to watch things and then come to conclusion. There's a logical conclusion in doctrine. And that is important. Jesus, hallelujah, read the scripture. He read the Torah. He understand. And he said to them, this day, this word is fulfilling your ears. So if we don't have a man, a clarity, a balance between uh, being being moved by the Spirit, Amen, and being guided and being led, Amen, by sound doctrine, we will end up in error. We will end up, Amen, being deceived. We will end up, Amen, doing things that are extra biblical. We will hear things that do not sound, you know, biblical, but we will not be able to challenge them because we do not have a reference, a basis to challenge them. I've been in trouble, amen, challenging so many things that I've heard, that I've seen, that are not biblically sound. They sound okay to the hearings, but biblically, they, they don't sound right. And so I challenged it. And then I got into trouble. But I love the trouble because I know that I'm, I'm, I'm challenging those things so that somebody someday, amen, will not fall into the, the trap. You see, there's a, there's a deceptive trap that we can easily fall into if we don't have doctrine. What is doctrine? Doctrine is consistent, amen, to the very nature of God, to the way Christ, amen, will have us live life, amen, and do things, amen, and look at things, and speak things, amen, and behave. Doctrine at the end of the day wants to build sound moral standard. Doctrine wants to give to us, amen, a, a, a blessed, if you will, a robust a, 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 a protocol of, of, of existence. Because we can do all things in the name of the Spirit is the one leading me. <laughs> we can do all kinds of crazy things in the name of I'm being led by the Spirit. Somebody can wake up tomorrow and say, well, I'm led by the Spirit, you know, to divorce my wife and go marry, or I'm led by the Spirit, amen, yes, you know, to leave this church. If you want to leave the church, there's a doctrine, there's a standard, there's a, there are things. Have you noticed Jesus preached doctrine? Jesus said, All right, uh, uh, is there anyone that, that offend you in the church? He said, go to the person. That's doctrine. That's not, that's not Holy Spirit leading me. There are things that Jesus said that you don't need the Holy Spirit amen, yeah, uh, to, to tell you before you do it. One of them is giving. He said, if, if there are good things you need to do, do it. Don't, don't wait. If you see something that you, if you see the, the you know, the, 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 the things of your neighbor or uh, your, the animal of your neighbor, you know, you know, running astray. He said, go, take the thing, bring it back to your neighbor. <laughs> You see, there, 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 are, there are things that, yes, we, most of course we need to live our life guided by the Spirit. But the Word of God, hallelujah, 
amen, has established certain value standard principle that we must live by, or else we'll end up like uh, uh, the Buddhists. We'll end up like, uh, do you know there are Christians today who are into yoga? They don't know that yoga, amen, is contrary in terms of meditation to the counsels of God. Yoga, amen, yes, yoga may make you feel, you know, uh, 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 young again. You know, yoga make you feel young. You feel energetic. You feel alive. Yeah, you know, may, may make you feel, you know, uh, 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 inspiring. But guess what? You're also opening your, your soul to a demonic world. Because there are no sound biblical teaching in the word of God. People are going into all kinds of things. But they say, but it's working for me. This thing is good. You know, our, 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 our sister, Sister Tina, shared some things with me yesterday. Because, she, I mean, she's in Asia. So she sent some videos, you know, about this, uh, you know, Buddha temple. And you must see the 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 people who are making comments about people that have visited those temples the big bill gates of this world you know all the powerful people you know people that people hail you know and they 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 basically were hailing buddha but buddha himself said amen he's not the way he's not the light he's finding he's searching for the light and he died searching for the light this is recorded buddha himself said it but because of the, you know, the, the lifestyle he lived, you know, that life of sacrifice, that life of piety. And Buddha came from a very rich home. But when he saw poverty, he decided to give himself to the doctrine of poverty, to the ways of poverty. But you see, he was trying to find salvation by his good works. But we know that good works will never help anybody. No matter how my good works attract a people, it is not the way. Jesus is the way. We don't understand what that means until we begin to understand the, the struggle of man in terms of searching for peace. When people want to talk about peace, they, 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 they talk about Asian religion, you know. Asian religion has a form of godliness, but denies the power thereof. There are all kinds of, you know, teachings that we should be teaching in the body of Christ that we don't teach because our men of God are shallow. I'm sorry to say, our leaders are shallow. So people who are searching for something more than just bless me, they go to Buddhism. They go to Shintoism. They go to, you know, uh, uh, Confucian, Confucianism. They go to all kinds of Scientology. They go to, some even go to, go back, Christians converting back to Islam. Because they believe that the, their teaching seem to be more, you know, authentic, more, you know, you know, practical. Because people are forever searching for something. You see, we want to pay our way. We're forever paying piety. And that's why some Christians today are going back to Judaism. Because there are all kinds of rules. You see, people love rules and regulation. But those rules and regulation, the more you pursue them, you will never be able to fulfill them. But when you come to Christ and begin to practice what Jesus says, I'm telling you, you have peace. But that peace may not come immediately. But you, you would develop because, you see, the soul will always pretend to offer to you the truth. The soul will always pretend to offer to you life. The soul will always pretend that it knows it all. Especially if you don't know what the spirit is all about. When you have not been exposed, amen, to the true way. You have not heard true doctrine, biblical, you know, sound doctrine. Um, in fact, many of us by nature hate it. Jesus said, Go do likewise. He, he, the guy got angry. I, is somebody getting what I'm trying to communicate to us? If you live life the way the Lord will have you live it, I'm telling you, you're going to begin to discover things that you've never discovered about your life. And then the way you God is going to be exposing you to truth will cause you to see your weakness, your 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 you know your frailty, your fear, your doubt. Many things we call, we practice, we call Christianity today, are far fetched from the truth. It's like the same man searching for Buddha, searching for you know 
Shinto is for Shinto, shouting for all kinds of you know Eastern religion. It's amazing. In Africa, we go into African religion, we go into all kinds of you know sacrifice because that's what we believe. We believe that if we do those things, if we practice those things, our life will get better. But you see, doctrine will correct those things. It's easy to give money, to give something to things, to offer your God knows what, to help. It's easy to do that when you have more than enough. But when you don't have at all, when you have your life at your last, amen, and you're supposed to share, Oh, that's when you realize. And this is what people are looking for. How do I share my last? Because they think that by sharing their last with somebody who is in need, they find this sense of peace. And then that opened the door for them to enter eternal life. Sorry, you've been deceived. So when Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father. In other words, there's no other way. There's no other religion. There's no other pattern. There's no other uh, 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 direction. There's no other spirit. Any uh, Jesus says, all who have come before me are thieves. You know what I was talking about? All who have claimed that they know the way, they know the way to God. You know, I've heard some of these powerful, you know, uh, 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 celebrities, including Oprah Winfrey, say, uh, Jesus is not the only way to God. As if Jesus is not God himself. <laughs> Are you see we are touching some very core fundamentals in terms of the prophetic so that you don't you don't jump into a man a, a wrong spirit a false spirit a familiar spirit in the name of the prophetic prophetic things can be judged and you need a sound doctrine amen to be well established on a prophetic foundation or else you'll be you'll be building spiritism in the name of building spirituality You'll be falling into the hand, amen, of, you know, you know, spiritist. In the, in the name of searching, in the name of looking for God. Thank you, Father. I love what we're talking about. A balanced truth. A balanced truth. A balanced truth is inconsistent. Is in consistency to an apostolic culture and philosophy. I'm not going to explain this because we've explained it. I'm just recapping some of the things that we have dealt with before, so that we can begin to delve into I mean, what we want to understand in terms of where we are today. All right. So, this is the last point and place that we stopped. We stopped at this point in our manual or in our PowerPoint. Finding the core of the prophetic spirit within the character life of the redeemed amen, spirit. And that's what I've been explaining. Tr trying to find in the core what are we, what are we trying to do we're trying to prevent ourselves from we want to understand because listen even if you are a prophet or you are functioning in the prophetic gift or you you you've seen some prophetic you know trace in your life and every one of us you have it amen it is important that we understand i was thinking about this this morning and i said maybe what i should do is Kind of write you know uh, uh, some highlight 21 reason why you need to develop a prophetic spirit one of them of course amen is for you not to be deceived secondly is for you not to be spiritually abused by so-called amen prophets another reason i'm just you know bringing all this point out you know by head not have written them out is because it's your spiritual heritage Is because it's your spiritual heritage. Another reason why you need to have, amen, a prophetic spirit 
is because you needed to make accurate decisions. You need it for accurate decision. You need it for clarity of direction. Because the Holy Spirit, amen, is a prophetic spirit. The Holy Spirit will always lead you into things to come. The Holy Spirit will always show you. But if you don't have a prophetic spirit, even if the Spirit is speaking, guess what? You're not going to hear. <laughs> and if you're hearing, you're going to be responding, amen, yes, negatively. Or you're going to re be responding, amen, inaccurately. Like we saw the young, amen, Samuel did. So maybe that's something we need to, you know, explore, you know, 21 reason why you need to develop a prophetic spirit. Maybe that's even a book, you know, just a few points that will help somebody out there to understand because the nature of the days that we enter, like I said, demands that we upscale, amen, that we build, that we come to maturity. You see, we can't come to the fullness of Christ according to Ephesians 4 if we're not talking about these things. If a church is not talking about this thing, if a spiritual leader is not talking about this thing, if we're not imparting this truth into our members, they will be deceived. They will be led away. They will be led astray. They will be cajole. They will be make wrong decisions and amen, everything will come back to us because when those problems happen, they will still come back to you, man of God. Yes, the, the, solve the problem for me. So let's do this teaching. Let's let's continue to find this point. Amen. Uh, finding the core of the prophetic spirit. Remember, we need a prophetic spirit before we walk in a prophetic in our office. We need first a prophetic spirit. It's like building a house. I, 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 I can liken this teaching to the building of a house. You don't start building a house from the roof. In fact... <laughs> In fact, there won't be a way to build a roof. You understand? You don't start buying a you know, material for building a house by building, you know, the finishing part, the roof. You start from your foundation. You start from the basis. That is what I have done in this training, in this teaching. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm starting from the from the from the core, from the foundation. In fact, from the footing before the foundation is built. I'm starting from the ground. The, uh, how we dig the ground, how, the footing of the of the foundation. You see, before you have a foundation, you need to have a footing where you build your foundation. What what's the kind of ground you have? You know, in the teachings we did years ago on the principle of redemption i talk about the concept of the of the footing how we came to jesus amen how what led us to christ all of those things matters to how we see christ you see and they inform our expectation about spiritual things so even our footing must be corrected there are wonderful people today who just have a total dysfunctional understanding about the things of God but they're nice people there are people today struggling their life they're struggling struggling but they don't know why they're struggling because they build their foundation on a wrong footing when they give their life to Jesus you know they will say they will, they will, they will say things like this come as you are yes you come as you are but the moment you come we need to wash you we need to wash certain things. We need to debunk certain values. We need to remove certain, you know, perspective. Amen. We need to, we, some of us need to go through a deliverance. Say, but I've given my life to Jesus. Well, everything should be fine. Yes, everything is fine. But there are certain strong goals, amen, that will need to be dealt with. Some strong goals, you need to cast them out. Some strong goals will need consistent, amen, teachings. Teaching, 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 teaching. You need teaching. You will sit down for months, yes, under a sound teacher before those strongholds lose their grip over your life. Jesus said, this one will not go except by prayer and fasting. Some will not go, amen, except you sit under people who have the teaching spirit, who are called into the ministry of the teacher. Oh, I love, I love the things that we're talking about. Yes. Because if you if you continue with that assumptive understanding that you brought to the things of God, amen, you will make bad decision. You will you will make even if amen you 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 make uh, 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 you decide on certain things that seem good in the future when there are contradiction when there is a problem you will wrongly conclude that maybe you made the wrong decision because you're not you're not sure you're not you're not you're not certain about amen the foundation of your decision you see all of this thing is about how to live life effectively that glorify God so finding the core of the prophetic amen, spirit within the
character within the character of the redemptive spirit that's what we're dealing with i said it is it is important amen that as we go on or before we proceed further into this training which of course we've been proceeding we need to find amen and understand what formulate that's the key word what formulates what formulates what brings together what shape what creates amen what formulate the life of the prophetic there's a prophetic life what formulates the prophetic life amen that i've turned down all right i'm going to show you now what formulate this prophetic life that i've turned down amen in, in this few points what are these few points here let's look at it let's look at it there are few points that i've turned down i think they're about uh, 24 i'm seeing oh my word oh lord <laughs> 30, 37 points this 37 point all right uh as the spirit leads me formulate what you call a prophetic amen spirit or a prophetic nature <laughs> remember functioning is a given functioning amen functioning is is a is an after effect is a manifestation of something you you have built of something that you are of something that have been processed of an experience you see what i'm doing right now is a function but this function comes because amen i have done my research i've done my findings amen i've prayed i've done all the things that i need to do i'm not just coming amen saying things no you see many a times we look at a function and we're like wow I want to be like that wow I, I i covet that oh that's good but are you ready to go through the process are you ready to go through you know it's like it's like the work of an you know an athlete a good athlete amen begins to train begins to train for a day event whatever event that athlete amen is going to compete on amen that athlete does not start the training the day the event is to take place you get the point it's a it's a it's a clear analogy all right if if you are if you are an 100 meter dash you know a uh, uh, race guy you know the kind of training that you must put yourself in. All right? And this training is not just about, you know, running on the track. There are all kinds of things that goes into the training. Your mental agility. All right? The quality of food that you eat. Yes. Your, your sleep level. How you sleep. How you rest. And then, how you wake up. The training. The rigorous training that you put into it, all of that builds something in you. It builds a muscle memory. It builds a self-confidence. It builds a sense of achievement. There's something that comes over you that in the day of that single event, just that single, all of the things that you have been preparing for, for maybe two months, three months you've been training for one day event. All of those things are summoned to bear. When you're at your mark, get set, go. Everything comes to play. One day training will never win an event. In fact, a week's training might not win an event. It's the same thing with the things of the spirit. Your spirit man, here's the word of God. Your spirit man needs to be trained as an athlete or a boxer, amen, or a wrestler, hallelujah, gets to be trained. You need somebody to coach you. And even in that coaching, you may need, amen, special specialist who will tell you, amen, the kind of food to eat, amen, who will tell you how to sleep. You'll be surprised. Amen. The kind of things that people invest into to become the best in their field. Being a good sportsman, amen, is like preparing for, uh, for entrepreneurship. For, for preparing to go into the world of business. And that's the way, amen, I see my work. This work to me 
It's a business. The only difference is I'm not doing this business to make money. I'm doing it to advance, amen, the life of the people of God. I'm not doing this business, amen. Jesus said, must I not be about my father's business? Why he's saying, why he's highlighting there is, amen, I've put all my energy, my focus, my priority is to see that the intentions of God, amen, are done. And if I must, if I must do it, I must do it deliberately. I must be deliberate about the things of God. You see, I'm deliberate. I'm very deliberate. I've been always deliberate about the things of God. <laughs> you know, not too long ago, my wife asked me a question. You know, if you're single, do you think you, you would do better in, in your work? I said, of course. Of course, I would do better. Not like I'm complaining that as, as a married person, with all the responsibility you have, uh, that yeah it's challenging it's challenging that's the reality that's a fact but guess what as a single person i was focused because i know what i want to achieve i know what god has committed into my hand you said were there direct distractions in your life of course there were distractions in my life any single person even will get distraction but i tell you i can score myself i was focused being single i wrote books amen I, I you know i write manuals all my messages most time i you know i put i put down you know and i'm not that kind of a person that you know you you preach an one hour message my my messages are always serious and everything i say all right always have relevance and all of that begins with the building up they say building up your building up yourself on your most holy faith your spirit can be built your spirit can be trained you can equip yourself earlier listen to this nobody wakes up one morning suddenly they find themselves in success in the land of success no success is a deliberate goal that you set to achieve remember i didn't say where success in anything it could be success in becoming the best you know a tennis player it could be success in 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 developing the best industry in the field of agriculture or in the field of god knows what it could be success whatever area of life that we are called to function we are called to succeed there not to fail there and to to succeed in any area of life you need the same principle you need to wake up at a particular time you need to be deliberate in your decision. You need to know earlier the, you know, how to relate with people. You need to know how to commit yourself. You need to be somebody, amen, who keeps the time, amen. You need to know, amen, that when you fail today, that doesn't make you a failure. That you must try again tomorrow, but the experience of yesterday's failure, amen, enhances you to succeed today. Success, amen, is an attitude. It's an attitude. Is a state of the mind. Success is a state of the mind. I I am a success, amen, in my calling, in my field, in my assignment. I can boldly tell you that in this field, in this place, God has positioned me. I am success. I walk, I know because I know, and it's clear. The things that we have done, the th- how we are transforming life, the inputs that we are putting into it, we are seeing the result all across the globe. But that doesn't come because I fold my hands. Or I just wish, well, I, mean, well, I don't see the people that I'm preaching to. So I can just do whatever. No, no. I am very aware that people depend on the things that we're talking about. I'm very aware of the lie, of the deception out there. I'm very aware of the falsehood that has been promoted, that has been promoted, that has been purported out there. I am very aware and I'm aware that whatever I say must counter those things, must open the eyes of people to the truth. And amen, if they apply it, it should change their life. I'm very aware of that. So you have to be deliberate when it comes to the things of God. If you are wishy-washy, you don't know, uh, should I? No, no, then you are not ready for the things of God. You have to be deliberate. I am deliberate when I'm teaching my children, when I'm telling them this is how life is all about. Because one day I want them to grow up earlier and manifest a responsible, you know, a, a teenage life, adult life. You understand? You have to be deliberate. You have to be determined. Sometimes, you know, they look at me like, no, you disturb us. Yes. That's because I don't want them growing up and being walked upon and being looked down upon. 
You know, I don't want somebody looking at their skin and say, because of your skin, you are disqualified. I don't want anybody, amen, taking advantage of them. So, I'm building them up, amen, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. You're teaching them about money, ma money management, how to manage money. When you're given money, you don't spend all the money. Teach them how to keep your money. All of this are principles that speak to us about building a spiritual life. And God uses that, amen, to train us to become, amen, his vessel when it comes to the prophetic. See, the prophetic speaks into every dimension of life. Can you see? I just use an issue, the concept of sport. I'm not a sport person, but I understand the philosophy. I understand the philosophy. And we all must understand it. So what we're doing is to find the core, amen, the core character, the core nature of what is called, amen, the spirit of prophecy. So let's go. Number one, these are the core character. Number one, a love and a passion for God and of course for his presence that you'll find in Mark, amen, 11, 20, uh, 29. I'm not going to explain i'm just going to try to read some of them because if we begin to explain them one by one but i just want you to get a picture of what we're talking about that the prophetic amen rest on something is built on something these are the footing amen that your prophetic spirit your prophetic nature rest upon hallelujah this footing would then amen open the door for the prophetic gift and the prophetic office amen to begin to function that is a big if that is if you are called into the prophetic office if you're not called into the prophetic office that's fine that doesn't stop you from amen functioning within the sphere of your prophetic nature because you're born of god everyone that is born of god has a prophetic spirit because the prophetic spirit is about carrying out, is about knowing and carrying out the objective of God for your life. It's about God using you, amen, to reflect his purpose. Simple. It's that simple. So this is good teaching this morning. This is good teaching. So, you, you're, you're not trying to uh, make yourself a prophet. No, no, no. You don't have to be. You don't have to call yourself a prophet when you know you're not a prophet. There are people that I've met, you know, that are, they are not prophets, but they love the prophetic. And there's nothing wrong in loving the prophetic. They desire, they admire the prophetic. Amen. And that's good. And in fact, they should desire it and they should admire it. But don't then, amen, uh, uh, move into the point and place where you presume a prophetic office because that's a different ball game. The prophetic is not just about carrying out an action. Amen. Listen, listen to this. Let me let me let me refresh what, I, what, I, what, what I'm about to say. The prophetic office is not just about carrying out a function. The prophetic office, amen, is about your life, amen, reflecting the intentions of God as a voice in the earth. You don't want that. <laughs> You don't want to convert that. I'm telling you. I, I, I would rather you stay. Let me see if I can stand. I would rather you stay and function, amen, within the sphere of a prophetic spirit. Because with a prophetic spirit, you can still know what will happen tomorrow. With a prophetic spirit, you can sit among your friends and God can be speaking to you about people, about their situation, about their condition. With a prophetic spirit, God can still use it to pray for nations. With a prophetic spirit, God can still use it to prophesy into people's situation and condition. God can give you a dream. Amen. God can, you know, give you a vision. God can lead you to places to do things for, for him. With a prophetic spirit, you can still operate. Amen. Within the world of your business, within the world, amen, of your career, amen, and still be sound. Amen. In that prophetic uh, uh, spirit. But to be called into the prophetic office is a total different ballgame. And I mean it. I'm, that, you know, 
there are things that will happen to you you will never be able to understand until you see Jesus and you may live your life questioning so many things about your life I mean look at Jeremiah as a man Jeremiah said I want to die I am so fed up I mean look at Job many many who have been called into the prophetic amen at some point they have wished that they die literally God take me out I've been there I've said to God Lord I am so fed up and I'm tired in fact I, 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 I want you to just take me away. I'm tired. And not because you're, you're tired, not because you're physically tired. You see, I cannot explain some of this thing to you. It's not an office to be coveted. It is not an office to covet. In fact, you will enjoy prophetic, amen, manifesting your prophetic spirit. Because listen to this, your faith, amen, will be operating within the reality of your prophetic sphere. I mean, as a priest, you're, 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 call, you're, you're, a, you're called priest. Everyone should be a priest if you're, if you're giving your life to Jesus. So you should be able to function, amen, within that priesthood with a sound, with a strong, with a mature, amen, prophetic spirit. But don't covet a prophetic office. But if you are called into a prophetic office, and guess what? Most of them were called into a prophetic office even before we give, we, we give, before we give our life to Jesus. But we need to grow and discover the office. So it's not because, well, I'm so good, I'm so faithful, you know, in the things of God. And therefore God says, because you've been faithful, so I'm giving you a prophetic office. It doesn't work like that. You are called before the foundations of the earth. <laughs> So the trace will have been there. They would have seen it in you. You may not even know it. You may even have fought it. You may have rejected it. But one day, boom! That thing comes alive. And all your world is turned upside down. Everyone who was calling to the prophetic, they will tell you that's the first thing. It's like your world is turned upside down. The things you don't want to do are the things, amen, they begin to push you. To us places you don't want to go are the place that push you to us it's like everything you hate becomes what you begin to love why because it is a calling most time nobody admire the calling because the calling causes you first to die it calls you to the cross the calling shatters your world you see, I'm saying things that I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not prepared to say today. But it's important that you understand this. But what I'm saying is, these points that we are about to read, these 37 points, amen. If you have them well built, well established in your life, I can assure you, you will function. In fact, if you function in this level, I don't want to promise you, but I, 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 I can, I can. Let me, let me say with a, with, with certain, you know level of doubt that you may begin to function in an advanced prophetic office but it's not a given so these are the core character amen that established for us amen a solid prophetic spirit the prophetic spirit is built solidly on this character and i call them amen discipleship background you must have this concept in your if you don't have them then go build them up if you have this manual you know if you will thread these things out amen and paste them somewhere you can see them daily and and pray these things amen this this point that i've, I've put down so i'm gonna read through this and then i'm gonna be done for you know this morning all right we said the number f number one thing amen is a love and a passion for god not a love and a passion for the gift. Not a love and a passion for an office. Not a love and a passion for something else. But a love and a passion for God and his presence. Now, how did I come to this conclusion? Of course, you will know the scripture in 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says, If I speak in tongues of men. Now, these tongues of men, we're talking about you know, an expression of the highest quality of mental capacity. You know, there are people like that. They, when they speak in tongues of men, when they speak, you can't, you can't flow. 
You can't flood their word. You can't fault their word. They, they, they are, they are, they are almost like an or oratory. I mean, and a, a good example of such people in our day is Barack Obama. When Barack Obama speaks, I mean, he, you can see his God, his, his God words, his God, the, his, his God the expression of word, and he uses that, amen, to charm people. Is a black man, but when he speaks, you don't see his skin. There's a level of intellectual, you know, you know, capacity and competence in him. Even though he made bad decisions. In fact, many of the decisions he made were bad, but he made them, amen, disguised, amen, behind those fine words. Fine words can deceive us, but fine words are good. You see, I'm not an oratory. I make mistakes in my word, but I know what I'm talking about. I know what I want to say. Even if I can't find the, the right lingua, the right, you know, uh, uh, phraseology. But I know what I want to say because words are spirit first. See, my spirit, I know what I want to say. And it's important we understand this. It's God that gives us the ability to speak forth. Amen? So, he said, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels. Oh, wow. I don't know if anybody have heard tongues of angels. I don't know if anybody, you know, have uh, had conversation with angels. But there's something Paul called, amen, the tongues of angels. Angelic tongues. Angelic language. That's that basically what it means. You know? Language of men. There are people that can speak more than one language. They can speak French. They can speak, you know, uh, German. They can speak, uh, 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 you know, many of the African language. They can speak all kinds of language. You know, they just, and they are fluent. They are, it's a gift. But Paul said, if I don't have love as the base of this expression, I am only a ringing gong or a clinging symbol. You see, many will relate the prophetic to, you know, a verbal ministry. And it is a verbal ministry. The prophetic is a verbal. What You see, if I cannot speak, if I cannot communicate, how do I function as a prophet? Somebody getting the point that I'm making? How do you function in ministry if you, if you cannot talk, if you cannot speak? One of the things they do when they are training you, amen, to become a, 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 a voice for God, they first seize your voice so they can train you properly. When they are ready for you, they, they lose your voice to speak. <laughs> Moses said, I can't speak. They say, yes. But when God touches your lips, you will go, but you will speak, amen, not just to ordinary people, but before. You know, when you stand before kings, you must watch your word. Every word must be selected. Every word must be curated. Every word must be well positioned because your word, amen, the things you say can either give you life or cause your death. You can't go and say things. You know, you open your mouth. You can't speak to people in high position of leadership as if you're talking to any, other, any ordinary person on the street. No. You, you, they, they teach you amen, how to converse, how to speak before kings, before leaders. It's important. And that is because of their position. But you see, when it comes to the prophetic, yes, we honor, we respect kings, but we speak the mind of God. This is what God says. When you say, thou see the Lord, you better believe, you better be sure that you are speaking on behalf of God. <laughs> because that may be your last word. <laughs> are you getting this? If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have no but have no agape. So agape, amen, becomes the benchmark, becomes the footing, the frame, and the roof of what we define to be the prophetic. I think I'm going to just uh, uh, finish this one point, then I will be done, amen, for, for today. 
for this morning. Our love for God and the presence of God, our passion for God and for His kingdom, amen, established for us a solid footing in our journey, in our development into the prophetic office or the prophetic gift or even the prophetic spirit. Now, the second point that I highlighted, amen, a deep, a deep sense, a deep sense of the nature and the revelation of Christ, if I may add, of the ascended Christ. We must have, amen, this is the second, remember what we're dealing with, the footing. Before you build a foundation, what defines the level of your ground, the groundwork, foundations are built, right? Footing in most cases, amen, are there by nature. Footings are there by nature. But you've got to correct that footing. You, when, when, you, when you want to build a foundation on a swampy area, you know that you have to spend more money. Come on, in that place. The, the, the amount of money you're going to spend, the quality of material you're going to spend, amen, building a house, amen, on a swampy area or, let's say, on a water. Because people today build, amen, their technology that allows to build on a water. So, the technology, the resource, the timing, the technology, all of the things that is needed in building on a swampy area or building, amen, on uh, on water is totally different from building a house amen on a rocky you know stony ground you spend less on a stony ground because the stony ground has already given you solidity solidity you already have solidity because what you're looking for amen in a foundation is solid you want solidity you want stability amen you want consistency so that when the wind comes when the rain blows, amen. When the tornado, whatever it is that is coming, hallelujah. Your, your house may be shaken, but it's standing. It's standing. There's a there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a sense of stability. But if you're building on a swampy ground, your building on the ground is just sandy, it's sandy, and the sand itself is losing, has lost a nutrient. You know, sands have nutrient. The sun has lost nutrient. You're building on the muddy clay ground. You know that you have to do a lot of reinforcement. Yes. This is what we need. Amen. In our, in our approach when we come to God. We need all kinds of reinforcement. We need to be trained. That's why when people come to me. They're like hey. I say no no. We need to go through training. People come to me and they say, man of God, assist me. Help me. I say, okay, I'm going to send this book to you. I'm going to send this material to you. You study them. You work on them. Then we'll, we will talk. And then we can begin to talk about... And some of you, some people just like, I thought you are just going to pray for me. You're just going to do... I say, sorry. It doesn't work that way. You want to grow, but you don't want to put in the time. You don't want to invest in your spirit, man. But you want to... You, you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help you. If you want to, amen, become what God has ordained for you, yes, you need to learn to invest in the development of your spirit. You need to sow, amen, yes, to yourself, good seed. You need to sow into things that will give you solidity. I will expose you to material, not just my material alone, other people's material that I know that I can recommend. Why? Because I want you to have solidity because the storm will come. The false prophets, the wolves will come. False teachers will come. False Christ will come. If you don't have solidity on the revelation of truth, if you don't know how to test the fruit, how do you overcome? Oh no. Just prophesy. Just lay hands on me. I just want to prophesy. I say, sorry. This thing don't work like this. 
Why well, see? That's how people have been taught. That's how people, amen, have been told. You see, I don't want you to depend on me all your life. I want to give you the resource. I want to equip you so that you can become, amen, yes, your own best, you know, achiever. You can, you can, you can wake up one morning and go out. God can speak to you and say, now it's time to leave your father's house and go to the land I will show you. You can hear and you can have the confidence to go, hallelujah, and achieve in various realms of life that God has called you without looking back and saying, oh, I wonder, hey, should I turn back? The Bible says the Lord will not delight in them. Amen. Who set their hand in the plow and are looking back. No, I want you to go for so that that's why I'm doing all this training. I'm teaching you. I'm giving you, you know, quality time to build yourself, building up yourself on your most holy faith. Your spirit can be built, friends. Your spirit, man, can be developed. You can develop muscle memory in your spirit. You can develop the spirit of your mind. You can develop amen, the ability to know things in your spirit. Yes. There's, there are things called the things of God. You can know those things. You can become you know, a, a, a proficient in the ways of the kingdom. We can teach these things. You, you can experience the things of God. You can, you can build your spirit to the point, amen, that you begin to interpret even dreams and visions. Because when God begins to give us dreams and visions, we certainly need, need how, to, how to interpret them. The outpouring of the spirit of God in the last day, amen, will be related to what? Yes, the outpouring of dreams and visions. And prophecy. Those are the three things. I will pour out my spirit in the last day. John chapter 2. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. On your old men. Amen. I will pour out my spirit. They will dream dreams. Your young men will see vision. Your, your, your maidens. Amen. Yes. Will prophesy. But how do you. Amen. Interpret dreams. Vision. How do you, how do you prophesy. If you are not trained. In the things of the spirit of God. Get my point. It's as clear as ABC. We need to put in the time. So we said, second point is a deep sense, a deep sense of the nature, amen, of the nature and revelation of Christ. You need to know Christ, not just Jesus. You need to know Christ and then you need to know Jesus Christ. (laughs) I'm not trying to confuse you. Jesus was the body, amen, that Christ walked in. Christ is the anointing. Christ is God. Christ, amen, is the, is the third person of the Trinity sent on earth, hallelujah, that inhabited the body of the Son of Mary called Jesus. That when Christ meets with Jesus, amen, of course, Jesus Christ became an expression. Jesus said, touch me. Spirits don't have body. The spirit of Christ took the form of a body. Amen. Was housed by a person. Just as we today, hallelujah, can be housed. Amen. Sorry, we can house Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. When you begin to converse, you begin to grow in the knowledge, in the revelation of Christ. You see, to know Christ, you have to, you have to move to, the, to what is called, amen, the ascended knowledge. The ascended knowledge of God. When he ascended on earth. You see you can't know Christ. From just the miracles that he did. When he was on earth. You have to know Christ. Because that Christ spirit came from somewhere. When you begin to know Christ. You begin to grow. Amen. uh, In the knowledge of Christ. The anointed one. The Messiah. Your life will change. Your perspective will change. Your understanding and interaction to life will change. And we say the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So you begin to know how to act. You see, the spirit of prophecy is not just to speak. Sometimes the spirit of prophecy is an action. is a reaction. is a state. is a position of thinking. It's how you look at things. Hallelujah. Okay, the, the, I'm going to stop at this last point. A passion to know and see God's word become flesh. This is this is something you have to 
you have to take i'm talking about amen how to develop the core character that established for us amen the prophetic spirit you see the prophetic spirit lays the foundation for prophetic giftings and the prophetic office yes so a strong desire and a passion for god's word to become flesh so you don't just want the word to be there no you want the word to become real to you and the word became flesh and dwell among men this is where i'm going to stop this morning excellent teaching today excellent teaching this morning i hope and i pray that the things that we have highlighted by the spirit of god has built within your spirit man a quest a yearning a longing a passion to know what is known as the more excellent way because that is my desire that your life become the expression of the nature of the spirit of Christ which is prophecy which is to proclaim and to declare thank you so very much my dear sister it is my prayer it is my desire that the will of God becomes a manifest reality in your life that you will not be deceived that you will begin to know things and know people by their fruit this is my prayer amen thank you my dear sister Kumisa. nice to have you join we have to grow our spirit we have to develop our spirit man it's in it's it's in when our spirit man gets developed they will begin to interact with the giftings of god the the prophetic amen is a gift we can interact with it we can know things we can see things we can hear things we can we can we can represent god amen no matter how wide how big the thing is no matter where we find our life ourselves amen we can interact with the things of god yes and we can be bold about it you see to be bold means that you are you are sure and all of this thing does not mean that we have to necessarily be called into a prophetic office Yet there are those that are called into the prophetic office. The prophetic office is one of the ascended ministry. And in the ranking of this ministry is the second. The Bible says first the apostle. Secondary. Amen. Yes. The prophets. So God. Amen. Has put this thing in, in an order that will allow us to know. Amen. How to relate with them and how to function in them and how to amen interact with those who function in them. You see, all of the things that I'm talking about that we're talking about will help us to identify and know how to interact with people who function in the prophetic office. One of the biggest problems we have in the body of Christ is that people don't know how to interact with prophets. And we need to develop all of the spiritual senses. See, what are we doing? We're developing, we're awakening our spiritual senses. Just as our natural, you know, psychological mind has been developed to the point that we make certain decisions based on our soul. Now we need to grow, amen, and develop and begin to make decisions based on our spiritual senses. Jesus knew things and the things that Jesus knew, amen, guided him in how to relate with life on a daily basis. He goes to pray. He comes down, amen. He begins to take actions, his life was a full manifestation of, of the kingdom of God. Of the reflection of the heart of the father. Only what I see my father do. So we pray this morning. I pray this morning. Oh that this truth will be well seated in your spirit. That the Lord himself will continue to guide you and lead you. And build you up. Oh and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. It is my prayer that your spirit man will grow in every area even as you continue to humble yourself that there will not be a place of pride in you no that you will daily embrace the cross the cross is the answer to the pride of man that as you continue to embrace the cross and walk in that Asian path in that straight and narrow path oh that you will find rest for your soul it's my prayer 
that Christ will be magnified in you that Christ will be formed and shaped in every area of your life that your existence will become indeed an unfulgence a manifestation of the will of God that Christ will yes will be done through your life that the kingdom of God will flow in and through your life or that you will grow in all of the fullness of Christ that you will live life yes in the expression of the love of God that you will not boast only in the tongues of men no that you will not boast amen in the tongues of angels but you will be established in the love nature of Christ that Christ will be formed in you Christ in me the hope of glory that your hope will be Christ not the crisis of this world that you will not look at the crisis and give up but you will look at the challenges of time and you will say christ my hope is in you my eyes are on you my trust is in you i surrender to you you are my way maker you are my hope my peace my joy you are my provision ah my help comes from you this day i grow to become all that you have ordained me touch my lips make my mouth like the pen of the ready writer may i speak words of mystery words of 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 increase words of peace words of joy words that will bring hope to the weary that will bring peace and joy yes to the down hearted this day i receive of your spirit pour your spirit afresh in my life steer your will in my life help me to live my life in honor in the honor of your name this day i surrender i yield to the flow of the river of your spirit i receive this day a fresh anointing the anointing that destroy the yoke may the yoke of slavery the yoke of confusion the yoke of insecurity false identity may they be destroyed in my life every yoke of sin and slavery may they be destroyed may the chain of hell be shattered in my life as i grow as i ascend to your heal this day i proclaim may your life envelop my life may i be drowned in the pool of your river oh may your spirit well up in my heart may i walk like you may i talk like you may i see through your eyes may i be healed may my mind be transformed May my life be renewed. May I become the expression of reformation. In the name of Jesus. Use me to stand in the gap. To pray for your church, for the body. All across the nations. All across Africa. All across Europe, America, Asia. The Far East. Lord, I declare, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. As it is done in heaven. Let it be done today in my life. Touch my lips. Touch my life. Give me the tongue of the learned. Make me your instrument. Make me a house of prayer. Make me an instrument. Make my life a house of prayer. Touch me, O oh God. Perfect your will in my life. Touch my eyes to see. May I see the way you see. May I see, oh God, yes, in the order of your name. Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I glorify you. Oh, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Father, thank you for touching your people. Thank you for giving us, yes, the tongue of the learned. Thank you for the power of of expression thank you for the spirit of discernment thank you father for the grace to know yes what your spirit de demands in seasons like this oh hallelujah i bless you oh god thank you lord that we are equipping your church oh god yes father yes lord with the spirit of prophecy with the spirit to know to see to walk to understand yes lord everything in accordance to your divine intention oh we bless your name lord hallelujah glory thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord for the architecture of your spirit thank you lord for the ways of your spirit thank you lord for the two leaf gates that are opening 
Thank you, Lord, for the guidance of your grace upon our life. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to walk, O oh God, in the path, yes, of righteousness because of your namesake this day. Thank you, Lord, that our eyes of understanding, yes, is been enlightened. Thank you, Lord, that we know things in the name of Jesus in accordance to your intention. Thank you, Spirit of God, that this day, O oh God, we walk, O oh God, circumspectly. Oh God, we redeem the time in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I give you glory. I give you glory for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may know you better. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that the eyes of our heart is being enlightened this morning this morning oh god thank you father for the hope that we have in this calling the calling of this glorious riches we have in christ jesus thank you lord that we step into our inheritance thank you lord that we increase in the power of your might thank you spirit of god that our spirit right now is opening to the to the to the release of that which your spirit is pouring forth. Aha. We receive in the name of Jesus the development of our inner man. We receive in the name of Jesus the growth of our spirit man. We receive in the name of Jesus the authority to stand and to proclaim the year of the Lord's Jubilee. I bless you because your spirit is upon us. The spirit of the Lord is of, of, of the Lord God Almighty is upon me for he has anointed me. Thank you Lord that we proclaim that we are anointed we are anointed in the name of jesus to open the eyes yes of those that are blind we are anointed in the name of jesus to set free those that are in prison we are anointed to open the gates of to open the gates yes uh, or are the people yes are in we are anointed to break the chains of slavery mental emotional slavery physical emotional financial slavery whatever slavery yes the people are here we thank you for the anointing right now that is shattering uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, yes, Father, those chains are uh, uh, bless you, oh God, that we are able to proclaim the year of Jubilee. We proclaim, we declare the year of Jubilee. As you said to us, go forward. We go forward, Lord, this day. We excel, we advance. Uh, we are excelling, we are advancing, we are proceeding further in the name of Jesus. Uh, by faith, we declare that we are going further. We are overcoming in the name of Jesus. Uh, we are taking over over. We are taking possession of the mountains. We are the Caleb ge generation. We are taking over the mountain. We are taking possession as we rise up this day. Yes, Lord, as a Davidic generation, becoming the tabernacle that you are restoring. Hallelujah. We bless your God that we are the priest, oh God, that will function in this new order of the third temple. We bless you for your spirit that is upon us. Uh, thank you for the spirit of prophecy. Thank you, Father, for the spirit to prophesy. Thank you, Father, for your grace, oh God, to minister life to those oh God who need healing who need hope who need peace who need joy in the name of Jesus uh, we go forth in the name of Jesus you said before them is like the garden of Eden thank you Lord that we are able to transform the realms uh, in the name of Jesus uh, we honor you we glorify you that no weapon of the enemy from the fashion against our minds uh, will prosper your church is rising up uh, the gates of hell will not prevail this day I speak life uh, to the church to the body of Christ I declare church I rise uh, take your place uh, be renewed be reformed uh, be empowered in the name of jesus uh, be positioned to advance the will of god uh, begin to see with the sight of christ uh, begin to hear with the hearings of the spirit begin to rise up uh, in the capacity of a new man uh, in the name of jesus uh, i declare the blessings of god upon you church uh, arise uh, let the saints arise uh, let the two yes edges sword uh, be in their mouth uh, speak forth this morning the word of God uh, go forth and proclaim uh, the liberty of the spirit uh, over the nations uh, I declare right now a change over the realm over the sphere of this nation South Africa and the rest of the world we proclaim the year of the Lord uh, we proclaim the judgment of the Lord uh, we proclaim a new day uh, we proclaim uh, a new spirit uh, arise and shine for your light has come church uh, the glory of the Lord uh, is risen upon you be empowered in the name of Jesus uh, be energized uh, in the name of Jesus uh, don't give up don't lose your position uh, don't lose your sight uh, take your place this day uh, take your place this day let there be healing in the house uh, let there be hope and restoration let there be provision let there be sustenance uh, in the name of Jesus uh, lift up your eyes and behold Christ uh, his kingdom come near you his kingdom come near 
you. His will is done in your life. Uh, his purpose is, is established this morning. Uh, let there be an arising. Come to the new level of the spirit. Ascend to the place of divine functionality. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I declare this day all authority and power and dominion. Yes, it's been given to you. Therefore, invoke the name of Jesus as a blessing over your space, over your life, over your home, over your family. In the name of Jesus, over your ministry, declare it. I will live and not die to declare the counsels of God in the land of the living. Lord, I thank you for your word that is going forth, for your intentions that is manifesting right now. Thank you, Lord, for this ministry. We're rising up. We'll continue to build up. Yes, build up, build up, build up the highway. We are building the highway of the Lord. We are the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his path. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Our God is risen with a shout. His name is the Holy One. He rules and reigns over the firmament. His authority is unstoppable. His dominion is, ever, is an everlasting one. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. God bless you everyone this morning for joining us wherever you have joined us for, from. Wherever you'll be joining us from. We want to appreciate what the Lord has done today, this morning. We want to thank God for his love, for his mercy that never fails. We appreciate, amen, what the Spirit of God has done. May the Lord continue to lead and guide our step. May his will continue to prosper in our life. So once again, I appreciate you. We'll see you again, hopefully, maybe today, if the Spirit of God gives me the grace and the opportunity to come. We will continue and we will, amen, just pick up from where we stop. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful church service uh, fellowship today. God bless you. Bye-bye.